Welcome to the Plant Farm Eat YouTube channel. Pitaya are fast growing perennial earthy wine like cacti. The flowers are hermaphroditic, however, some pitaya spices are self incompatible. The fruit is fleshy berry, which is oblong and about 4.5 inches thick with red or yellow peel, with scales and with or without spines. To increase the potential for food production, plant two or three different genetic types. In countries where pitaya are native, selections from the wild are being used. Pitayas grow well in tropical and subtropical climates, mostly free of frosts and freezes. For propagation, usually entire stem segments of 6 to 15 inches are used. Pitaya plants might become quite large and spreading. Fertilize a month after planting or until plants begin to grow. Pitayas have a fairly high water requirement. Harvest only well-colored, mature fruit. Pitayas are fast-growing perennial earthy wine-like cacti. They have a triangular three-sided, sometimes four or five-sided, green, fleshy, jointed, many branches stems. Each stem's segment has three flat, wavy wings, ribs with cameos margins, and may have one to three small spines or be spineless. The stem sections of pitaya form aerial roots that adhere to the surface upon which they grow or climb. The stem might reach about 20 feet long. The flowers are hermaphroditic, however some pitaya species are self-incompatible. The extremely showy, edible, white and pink in other species, flowers are very large, very fragrant, nighttime and bell-shaped and might be up to 14 inches long and 9 inches wide. The stamens and lob stigmas are cream-colored. The fruit is fleshy berry, which is oblong and about 4.5 inches thick with red or yellow peel, with scales and with or without spines. The pulp might be white, red or purple, depending on the species. Seeds are very small, numerous and black, embedded with the pulp. To increase the potential for fruit production, plant two or three different genetic types. Cross-pollination between the different types in the planting will assure a better fruit set and size. Flowers open at night when there is no bee activity. Flowers of some cultivators remain open during the early to mid-morning hours and might be visited by bees. Alternatively, hand pollination might be done during the night and early morning hours by collecting pollen or whole stamens from one flower and applying it to the stigma of the other flowers. In countries where pitaya are native, selection from the wild are being used. Many of these have been introduced into countries that are interested in growing them. Unfortunately, information on the self-incompatibility of these cultivators and selection is not well documented. This makes variety recommendations difficult at best and potentially unreliable. Pitayas grow well in tropical and subtropical climates, mostly free of frost and freezes. They tolerate cool or warm climates, provided temperatures do not exceed 100 degrees Fahrenheit. They tolerate some shade and might be injured by extreme sunlight. They are considered a full sunlight crop in their native countries. Initial estimates from native areas 
suggests that the optimum temperatures for growth are 65 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Pitaya might be propagated from seed, but fruit and stem characteristics are variable and the time from planting to fruit production might be up to 7 years. Usually entire stem segments of 6 to 15 inches are used. A slanted cut is made at the stem base, then the cuttings are treated with a fungicide and left to cure for 7 to 8 days in a dry, shady location before they are planted directly in the field or in a well-trained media in pots. Cuttings grow very fast and many produce fruit in 6 to 9 months after planting. Longer cuttings usually reach the trellis supports faster than shorter ones. 3 to 4 years old plants might produce about 220 pounds of fruit per year. The life of pitaya planting is estimated to be about 20 years. Pitaya plants might become quite large and spreading, and therefore individual plants should be planted 15 to 25 feet or more away from trees, structures and electrical lines. A strong trellis should be established that might withstand several hundred pounds of stem weight. A weak trellis might buckle under the weight of a mature pitaya plant. Do not use wires on the trellis because they might cut or damage the stems. If wire is used, it should be covered by plastic hose. For the home landscape, consider a trellis for individual plants, which should consist of a post and a structure at the top of the post to support the plant. types of pruning need to be carried out to obtain maximum production of healthy, good quality fruits. The first one involves training the growing plants until they reach the trellis. This involves eliminating any lateral stems along the main stem until it reaches the trellis and tying the main stem to the trellis past. Soon after plants reach the top of the trellis, their tips should be cut to induce branching and the new laterals trained and tied to the trellis. Wait about a month after planting or until plants begin to grow to start fertilizing. Fertilization in the first year should be frequent with light applications of 0.25 pounds per plant. The addition of 4 pounds of well decomposed manure or compost around the base of the plant but not touching the stem is recommended during the first year. Apply small amounts of iron sulfate at the base of the plants growing in neutral and low pH soils. Pitayas are members of the cactus family and might withstand dry periods. They have a fairly high water requirement. However, excessive soil moisture will result in development of bacterial and fungus diseases. A dry period is required for abundant bloom induction, but once plants flower, periods of drought may result in poor production. Therefore, periodic watering is recommended for flowering through harvest. Mulching pitaya plants in the home landscape helps retain soil moisture, reduces weed problems next to the plant stem, and improves the soil near the surface. Mulch with a 2 to 6 inch layer of bank, wood chips, or similar mulch material. Keep mulch 8 to 12 inches from the base of the plant stem. Thorny pitayas are more difficult to harvest. 
leather clothes and long sleeved shirts are recommended for harvesting Tony Pitoes. Hand clippers should be used to remove fruits from the plants. Be careful not to damage the fruit and remove any stub at the stem attachment by cutting the fruit stem flush to the fruit surface. Harvest only well colored mature fruit. Fruit will keep 4 to 5 days at the room temperature or several weeks in a plastic bags in the refrigerator. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe and click on the bell button to be notified on the similar upcoming videos. Plant Farm Eat is a platform for horticulture and environmental enthusiasts, helping you maximize your time and efforts and provide you with pragmatic guides on how to plant, farm and eat sustainably.